So next up we have Dr. Thomas Alt, the CEO of Matayo, who is replacing Roman Hessenbach. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Thomas Alt, uh, CEO and co-founder of Matayo. Uh, automotive is driving AR. It's actually one of the better titles uh, the Matteo marketing department came up with. If you look at uh, the space historically, <coughs> actually automotive was driving augmented reality. 12, 14 years ago when I started in the space, uh, especially the European car manufacturers were the first one to discover the space of augmented reality as a driving innovation space in the future of driving. So Dima has actually spoken about quite a bit how augmented reality computer vision will eventually come to the driving experience. And I was asked to focus entirely how augmented reality is changing and is being deployed productively in the product life cycle for augmented reality. And if you look at a high level product life cycle in the automotive industry, you start off the product design, development, prototyping, simulation, factory planning, very important part, and then sales after sales as another field. All of these areas have augmented reality productively deployed today, not only with European manufacturers, but also with manufacturers around the globe. And I'll show you a couple of uh, very hands-on examples where the technology is deployed in the space. Let's start <coughs> uh, with product design, development, and prototyping simulation. First application, which is uh, widely deployed, uh, Audi and VW Group being the first customers, is an application of augmented reality, which is deploying the technology for design verification and essentially is solving uh, the critical question, are my parts, my vendor parts, which I'm buying from my vendors, fitting into my design? Do I have hoses rightly connected under the hood of the car? How do my wire harnesses look? And so on and so forth. Well, from a technical point of view, how the system is implemented, it's, and I'll go forward here a little bit, the rest is marketing. It's basically a system which is using from a tech perspective outside in tracking, so a tracking system which is deploying infrared cameras which are mounted on the ceiling of a design studio. These infrared cameras see an RGBD sensor and track the RGBD sensor and then you basically hold as a designer a tablet or a PC monitor in front of your head. You go around the car and you superimpose the CAD geometry over the car. What does it um, uh, yield in terms of precision? Usually precision requirements in that space of the product development uh, cycle are around in, you know, two, three millimeters and this is something you can realistically achieve by deploying the technology. But once again, it's not the dream of every designer to essentially just hold an iPad in your hand and go to the car and see a highly precise uh, superimposition. You need a lot more effort and a lot more technology to actually implement that. It's productively deployed. It runs off a Mateo tool called the Mateo Engineer. It is a true niche application. So not like the IKEA catalog in the hands of 15 million people. It is in the design studios, but it serves the purpose. And especially for parts which you really can simulate because they have a physical behavior, wire harnesses, hoses, and so on and so forth. It is a, the right approach to do a very early quality insurance. Talked a little bit about uh, precision. The next application in this product development cycle is what we call a prototyping application. This uh, essentially serves the need to have a very high accuracy superimposition. In order to achieve this, we are combining a thorough measurement arm, which is essentially a seven axis arm, and gets you one hundredth of a millimeter in accuracy. We connect to this measuring arm a camera, a visual camera, and, but we get the position of this visual camera out of the Faro system. With that, you can achieve precision requirements in the sub-millimeter domain, which is usually used in quality assurance in these uh, automotive applications. So that's um, the focus on um, product design applications, prototype applications. If we're now moving the vehicle out of the design phase into the actual production phase, the next application space is factory planning. Factory planning is highly complex. There are very few greenfield plannings in the world. 
there are enough automotive manufacturing plants. So most of the planning activities in that space is all around what they call brownfield planning. So you have an existing plant, you have existing robots, you have existing machinery, and you're trying to build new cars, new devices um, on the same manufacturing links. What do you actually do there? You use an approach you call marker-based tracking. It's pretty much the history of augmented reality, but now productively deployed in the industrial domain. And you use these fiducials or markers and a digital SLR camera, so no fancy iPad or anything, to get a fairly good superimposition. When I'm speaking about a fairly good superimposition, usually the precision range for that is in the five millimeter domain, which is enough to do things like robot planning, path planning, because these robot programs and path plans are manually corrected after deployment anyhow. So this is in the manufacturing uh, planning domain. If we're now uh, going further uh, down the product life cycle, we're in the sales after sales uh, arena. And actually in the sales after sales arena, there are many, many applications ranging from marketing tools, sales tools, documentation and training tools to service and maintenance support. The first two one are the obvious, right? It's basically marketing brochures, which is super impulsive content. It's sales support. You put your virtual car in front of your garage. So this is all nothing really new. So with the limited time I have, I would want to focus on everything around documentation and training and then, of course, later on uh, maintenance support. So if we look at um, documentation, one application we have developed with Audi, it's productive uh, in all the relevant markets, is an application they call eKurzinfo, right? Nice, catchy German name, I guess. And this uh, eKurzinfo application solves the fundamental need that, uh, especially Generation Y, is not reading manuals anymore. So they buy their new car, and essentially they don't know how to use the car anymore, so they need some kind of support. The application is pretty straightforward. You have a smartphone application. It runs um, on the usual devices, and once you turn on this uh, application, you, you point it to any point inside the car or around the car. It reads what you're actually looking at using five different types of computer vision approaches. And actually, the inventor sits back there. So once again, thank you, Salem, for inventing this. So you have five parallel approaches uh, to actually detect all these pieces and then push the uh, respective manual section uh, to the device. The next one, it's more in the training uh, space. It's something which is coming up. Uh, it's using projection-based augmented reality approaches to train trainers how to repair new cars. What we are doing here in the space is we're taking an off-the-shelf projector. We're connecting that. You see this here, uh, the Fenarchi BD sensor. By virtue of doing that, we are detecting the outside of the car, and we project concurrently onto the car, which is essentially then a nice way to visualize training and uh, service uh, instructions on top of that. The last one, service and maintenance support, is an application we are in particular proud of. When I started 14 years ago at VW, we were dreaming of that. Back then we had three SGI workstations doing that and it still didn't work. Now last year, VW has actually launched this application productively for their new super efficient 256 miles per gallon vehicle. It's an interactive manual which is using a new tracking approach from Mateo called the edge-based tracking approach. Why edge-based tracking? Well, it's kind of obvious that these anisotropic surfaces, they are very hard to detect and to superimpose the information. Uh, and in order to overcome this problem, we are using edges, so essentially stripped down CAD models, which we use for the initialization of the tracking system. More from the application, domain, what you see here is essentially service and maintenance instructions superimposed onto the car. Uh, the system itself has 670, if I'm not mistaken, uh, points of interest or service manual uh, sections supported by that. It's a great pleasure that actually Jürgen, who will speak next from Bosch, will pick up this topic and uh, will tell us specifically how Bosch is planning to bring this to a large scale deployment. And from my perspective, this summarizes everything I wanted to talk about, but that we have a conference coming up, 
which is very automotive heavy. It's called uh, Inside AI. It takes place in October in Munich. Last year we had all kinds of automotive manufacturers there and I would like to invite you to come to that. Munich is a great city and as you guys know the beer is terrific. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Thomas? <clears throat> yes, I wanted to see uh, what kind of uh, tracking technologies that you're currently using for uh, assembly confirmation when you're connecting two parts together or so to then show that as a single unit. And, and then al also, um, particularly for the automotive industry, what kind of regulatory environment are, are you in? Mm -hmm. are, are they looking for ISO certification or some other form of certification for the industry? Uh, to your first part of your question, you can have the sales answer or the engineering answer. I guess uh, the sales answer, uh, answer is the Mateo tracking technology. The more technical answer is it's highly specific to the use case. Mm -hmm. So essentially if you look at, and I explained that a little bit from the outside to a car, you definitely need edge-based tracking. If you do something which is you know, very confined in space and you want it to have it 100% exact, 100% robust, you would go the fiducial tracking. And so essentially from, from a tech perspective, our SDK has these different routines of tracking and you unfortunately have to customize it for your application. Second part of your question, regulatory requirements specifically for the service and maintenance piece. I guess, Jürgen, you can talk about that a little bit more easy. Uh, we don't really see in that space too many requirements because once again, it's in the, inside the product life cycle, not directly driver facing. There seemed to be a little bit of a gap between the beginning where you're talking about a lot of specificity for the hoses and the fluids and everything within the engine themselves, and then mm. when you actually got to the customers and showing what a button does. Mm. Is there uh, something missing, or uh, is there, I mean, what's the purpose of that gap as far as providing customers with more information? Well, I guess the gap is coming from the fact that the first applications I showed are essentially niche applications in the product development uh, space. And there you usually have engineers operating the system, which is, you know, they are a good crowd. They understand that what works and doesn't work and so on and so forth. While uh, the latter applications I showed are actually in the hands of end consumers, or in the hands of mechanics, and I can assure you they are not really error tolerant. Right? So you get a lot of uh, bad feedback. So from a system design perspective, um, the last two applications have to be much more bulletproof than the expert applications were in the product lifecycle. Why did you, for the, for the end user, the consumer, why did, you function, why did you focus on those applications versus others, and what other applications or functionality did you consider? Well, yeah, because I wanted to brag. I only had 12 minutes, and I have this lady sitting here, and uh, she looks pretty uh, strict. So I wanted to focus on the ones who are more unique. I mean, I would agree there are gazillions of the other marketing sales applications which are deployed by us, by our partners, uh, by our competitors, by all means. But I wanted to specifically focus on these applications. But I would agree there are brochures out there, all kinds of marketing applications also. Where does the United States lie on a world scope of use and application of AR? I have to talk to my PR consultant to answer that question. Um, well, not being a US citizen, obviously, more sounding like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I can, um, I can assure you, unfortunately assure you, uh, that uh, augmented reality in the automotive uh, industry has been a European domain for many, many years. Uh, as always, the U.S. is catching on quickly, so we are seeing tremendous interest from everyone around the Great Lakes uh, for the technology. And uh, I'm assuming that while it more or less being invented in Europe, uh, it will come to the U.S. quite quickly. But especially for this automotive domains, there are other domains where the U.S. was much more leading. But for this automotive domain, it was uh, lacking a little bit behind. That was a tough question. <laughs> We have time for one more. If there are no further questions, then thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you very much.